Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today I'm gonna to show you how to easily modify a 3D model to fit your specific need using Tinkercad. In this example, I'll be modifying this GoPro mount from Die Aero Mechanics that I got off of Thingiverse to fit my Source One quadcopter frame. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually measure where the mounting holes need to be to fit on this quadcopter frame. Like many quadcopter frames, the Source One has four holes for screws in the front of the frame. Now I'll be using these to mount the GoPro mount, so we need to measure the distance between the screws, and in this case, these are actually the same distance apart, about 30 millimeters. And we'll also measure the distance between the two sets of screws, so in this case it's about 41 millimeters. But in some cases, the distance between the holes side to side will be different for the front set and the back set. Either way, I'm going to show you an easy way of translating these holes onto the new model. Once you've measured these distances, write down a little diagram so that we can reference it later when we're making our modifications to the 3D model. Next, you can go to Thingiverse and download your model, and then let's jump into Tinkercad. Okay, here we are in Tinkercad. Now, I'm assuming you kind of know your way around Tinkercad, so I'm, this, is, this won't be like a full in-depth tutorial into Tinkercad, but I'm gonna bring you along and show you what I'm gonna do. The first thing we can do is we can go ahead and import our model, select our file, and import it. Okay, now that we have our file in here, we don't actually need to mess with it right now. We can just kind of set it off to the side. We do need to grab a ruler and drag it down to right about the center of our workspace. It doesn't really matter if it's directly in the center. Now, what we want to do is create four uh, basically holes or four negative cylinders. So I'm going to grab the negative cylinder. I'm going to increase the sides up to 64 so it's nice and smooth. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make the diameter 2.5 millimeters. That's very, uh, very skinny right there. 2.5 millimeters. Just like that. And then um, down at the bottom right hand corner and on the snap grid, I'm going to change it to 0.1 so we have um, some good, uh, good precision there. And now what I want to do is we're going to use the center of our ruler or the, uh, the, the, yeah, the center point of the ruler, sort of our, we, the Y axis is going to be sort of going away from us and the X axis is going to be left and right. Um, so this little three lined circle right there that changes from the midpoint measurement to the end point measurement, we are going to use uh, midpoint. So right now it's measuring the middle of that cylinder. So now what we want to do is we can go ahead and zero it on the X axis. So I'll type in zero for that, uh, for that little box right there. And now we want it to be half the distance um, that, it, that it is between the two front, we'll make this the front, the two front holes. So we'll go ahead and uh, type in 15, which so it's it's nice and uh, easy using pretty round numbers. And since we're going to be printing this with TPU, the exact you know hole spacing and hole size is not going to be that big of a deal because we'll have quite a bit of flex. And also, um, I would rather have these holes as far as the actual diameter. I'd rather have it be a little bit smaller because uh, it's a lot easier to make the hole larger after it's printed if, if, if necessary. So we have one of those in place right now. And so what we're going to do is uh, to create the other, uh, the other hole, I'm going to uh, go up here and click the uh, duplicate and repeat uh, button right there. And so now we have another duplicate right on top of that one. And instead of, uh, uh, instead of positive 15 on the X axis, I'm going to change this to negative 15 and press enter or click somewhere else. And then shabam, we have another one and we have 15, uh, or we have 30 millimeters in between them because we have 15 millimeters from, uh, the center of the, of the, uh, cylinder to the center line of our project. Now, because uh, this this particular um, hole spacing is symmetrical, it's like a just a rectangle. 
that's going to make this pretty easy because what we can actually do is we can actually select, let's see, let me click away. Let me click that one. So we can actually select both of these, these two, because we know that the, uh, the rear, uh, the rear two, the, the rear pair of mounting holes, um, is going to be the same distance, like apart, uh, like left and right. So what we can do is duplicate both of these, uh, holes right here. And then, uh, still using the midpoint measuring, we can go over to this little uh, box right here, which is going to give us our basically our, our y-axis uh, distance. Um, and we can type in, uh, let's see, 41, 41 millimeters. So what that's going to give us is 41 millimeters center to center. So from the center of these, uh, of the from the center of the rear, and, and again, since it's a rectangle, it doesn't quite matter whether it's the front or the back, but we'll say from the center of the rear uh, pair of mounting holes to the front pair of mounting holes is 41 millimeters. So that's pretty darn easy, really. Um, and if you have uh, if you have some, like, say, if these two were actually, you know, the distance between them was actually like 20 millimeters, you could just type in 20 and you would, you would, uh, you could easily... Oops, those got changed somehow. How'd that happen? Oh, I must have hit the wrong thing. But if you have uh, if you have some other uh, sized uh, pairs, and it's not a rectangle, then it's pretty easy to make those adjustments this way. So now what we can do, what's going to make this really easy to to uh, incorporate this into our model here, is we can select all of them. You can either click on each one or just drag over, uh, cl click and drag. Uh, to select all of them and then up in the right hand uh, corner we're going to click group or control G like that so now all of these are grouped together so you click on one and you move everything so now what we can do is actually um, now that we're, we're still using the uh, the center point and that's giving us the center of all of these like of, of the entire footprint of of all of four of these um, cylinders here so what we can do is just center this out by these these green green shaded lines that tells you how far the center point is from the center of our ruler so we can click zero or type zero um we don't want to mess with the vertical green line because that doesn't really matter right now um and then for the on the x-axis i wish it was actually labeled x-axis but I guess that's not, but I'm calling it the X axis. We're going to type in zero, press enter or click away. And boom, there we go. So that's on the center. So now what we can do is get our model. You could drag this to wherever you want it to match up, or we can center the model that we're using uh, in the same way and center it in the, the sort of the centered right along with our negative cylinders when i say negative i just mean uh w basically like what's going to happen when we add these or when we group them uh, when we hit the group tool uh when you add the negative shape or the whole shape that's grayed out that's going to cause it to cut into the normal shape so you can see here our hole spacing is actually too large for the actual model so in this case, like in some models, you might just like you, you might have enough actual material in the model already that you don't need to add material. But in this case, we will need to add material. So there's there's a few ways that we could do this. You know, generally, you, you want to stay away from like really hard sort of shapes, like like 90 degree angles and that sort of thing. Uh, but what we could do is, you know, you could get well, for example, you could get a cylinder, a normal cylinder. Um, increase the number of sides and then you could kind of play around with the actual shape so it's no longer a cylinder it's some sort of ellipse and then you could um, drag that over here so that it encompasses our new mounting holes and then we can uh, drag the shape down and you want to get it so that it's like just just about the right height again that's why we changed the snap grid to 0.1 millimeters so we have more control over that and then you could adjust this and get it so that you want to have a good uh, edge distance from the hole so that means 
the the distance between the edge of the hole and the edge of the model so that way you have a lot of strength because this will be a gopro mount and it's going to go on a quadcopter an fpv quadcopter so uh it could get bashed around like a lot so this is this is one way you could do it but i don't like that let's not do that so here's what here's another thing that you could do uh still using the ellipse we could actually rotate the ellipse here we could rotate it maybe like this something like this and kind of put it have it come out so maybe something like that that could work because the other thing we want to do is we want to fill in the old holes um so that way we're not trying to print a hole there because one it will make the model weaker and two it'll take a lot more time to try and print that hole um, as opposed to just making it a solid uh, a solid object so let's say we like that but we want to do the same exact thing on the other side uh, assuming that this model is um, you know symmetrical well what you can do is you can uh, you know select that ellipse shape that we're adding go and duplicate and repeat and then we can go over to the mirror tool click mirror and then you these these uh, arrows pop up and you can say mirror basically left and right so it will mirror it like that and then um, since we still have the, uh, we have the center, we're using the center point of the object, or the, we're using the midpoint of the object as the, uh, as the measuring reference. What I can do is instead of right here where it says 8.59, the, the distance of this object from the center of that axis, uh, I can do negative 8.59, 8.59, uh, and bam it will bring it over to this side and since we already mirrored it it should be a nice you know should be a symmetrical uh mirrored shape although in this case uh, having it be symmetrical doesn't really matter and then what we could do let's say we want to let's get another cylinder and then let's make it a whole shape and then what we could do is actually add this to sort of cut away uh cut away this front material because what we're doing we're doing a couple of things when we do that one we're we're lightening the object which is always important when you're talking about things that fly and we are also uh decreasing the weird shapes in there so when we're printing this it will just be a nice smooth uh a nice smooth movement um for our printer instead of trying to print a bunch of weird little you know little uh jagged edges and that sort of thing so let's say we extend it out to here i think that will give us i think that will give us a good amount of let's bring it in a little bit a good amount of uh edge distance right there like in terms of the strength and everything i think that will do so anyway let's uh let's try this out so let's combine all of these guys right here so uh, we can just do a little drag box, click and drag and create a little box, select all of these objects, uh, and then actually, well, well, we'll test it out right now, but we'll need to, we'll need to do the other side before we combine everything for good. So we'll hit combine and this is what we get. So it's kind of a weird shape. Honestly, I, I might change this. But you get the idea. Now, let's say we want to do the exact same thing on the other side, or on the what would be the, the front. What we can do is select uh, all of these objects that we added, so these two ellipses um, and this circular cut right there. And we can actually um, du uh, do a duplicate, and then we can mirror we can mirror it uh, sort of uh, front and back. You could also just like rotate it. Um, but so what we'll do is we will, I'm not sure exactly where it's going to need to be. So what we'll do is I can actually um, drag, let's make it, uh, let's see, let's make that zero. Where does that put us? Okay, so let's make it like negative 20. Yeah, that actually works out pretty well. So I just typed in negative 20 for the, uh, for the center point of these shapes. So it moved all these shapes, even though we haven't actually combined them yet. Um, yeah, that actually, that seems to work pretty well. We do have some kind of some weirdness over here. Um, 
Maybe we'll bring it down to negative like 22. What does that look like? No, that's too much. Let's do negative 21. Let's just kind of customize it for the front and the back. Just whatever you want. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be perfect, you know. And if if you're uh, if you're new to 3D printing and stuff, just play around with it. See what you like. See how it prints, you know. And a big part of how this will actually print will actually be in the slicer, the slicer software. So that's kind of kind of a weird shape to be honest, but yeah, okay, all right. And one more thing here, um, I appreciate that they put their logo on here or the the words arrow. I mean, because that's a cool that's just a cool word. But maybe I don't actually want that to be on there because. I don't really want to take the time for my printer to actually print out those letters. So what I'm going to do is bring a, uh, a hole box or a negative, negative shape. And we can make it, it doesn't really matter how tall we make it per se. And, but I'm going to bring it up to right up just above the level of the surface of this, of this object. And we'll, we'll, we'll change the shape to about that that of the uh, logo here, so it's just above the surface of of this. Um, so you can see it's like six point one five. I'm guessing this is probably six millimeters tall, which is actually pretty tall. This is probably a pretty beefy mount, but let's say six point six point two. Yeah, so that brings it just above the surface there. And when we combine this uh, with that shape, you will see that the yeah, so it doesn't quite disappear, but it, I'm not sure how well it will show up in the print. But in any case, uh, that way our printer won't actually have to print out that that logo. Usually what I like to see is an embossed logo. So, so you're actually not printing material in order to get the lettering or the logo. So, all right, this looks like a mess right now, and it kind of is, but let's go ahead and combined all of this now that everything is selected we'll click group and sometimes it can take a couple minutes uh, to render if like the internet is slow or whatever anyway we are left with this kind of weird looking monstrosity i would say um but uh you know that 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 might work but look hey you know what this is 3d printing we can just we print it we try it See how it works. It probably won't even take that much filament, really. I'm going to cut that down a little bit more because if if my, especially with TPU, if, if it tries to print um, lettering, I don't think it will turn out very well. So let's actually take this down to six millimeters and that should, that should cut through all the way and totally get rid of the lettering. Yeah, there we go. So we do have kind of like this weird box. And I'll go up here and change the name. And we will change it to Source One GoPro Screw Mount Arrow Remix. Check the description below so where, to where you can download uh, this model uh, just for funsies. It's not an amazing model as, as I have it here. And the original model in case you're interested in that as well. And finally, I'll go ahead and click Export. And then we'll say the selected shape because there's only one shape in the in in on the workspace. And then we'll uh, select STL, and then it will download. And ta-da, we are finished with this. Hopefully this helped you get your project going and uh, you, you learned some good tips and tricks for Tinkercad and uh, improve your 3D printing projects. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you again very soon.